Across the Americas and around the world, once again, you're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm your host, William Cooper, and in studio... Miss Carolyn Nelson. Folks, I'm going to be on a little investigative trip here for the next week, and while I'm going, you're going to hear reruns on both time slots. Those of you listening now have probably never heard these episodes of the Hour of the Time, and you should always listen to this broadcast with a pad of paper and a pencil or pen by your side. Never, ever make the mistake of sitting down without a pad of paper and a pen or pencil to listen to the hour of the time. We have very short patience around here for people who do not follow directions. So if you call up and want us to to recount the show for you because you didn't have your pad of paper and your pencil. I'm sorry, we don't have time to do that. We're very, very busy here. So make sure you get it the first time. If you miss a telephone number because we only say it once, that's okay. Um, now, I want you all to remember and try to catch both broadcasts each day simply because they're not the same ever. What's broadcast in this time slot, 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 Mountain, 7 Central, and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is not the same information that is broadcast during the later time slot, which is 9 Pacific, 10 Mountain, 11 Central, and Midnight Eastern Standard Time. Tonight's show is important for it verifies everything that I've been telling you in the Mystery Babylon series which we have done 31 episodes of and we have included the Dawn of Man which ran prior to the production of the Mystery Babylon series in any orders for this series so that actually makes 32 tapes but tonight's episode will be episode number 32 of the series known as Mystery Babylon. Don't go away, folks. You need to know what you're going to hear tonight. For those of you who don't believe that those who call themselves illumined, the only truly mature minds in this world, and thus are the only ones capable of deciding the future or of ruling the rest of us, those of you who don't believe these people have infiltrated all levels of our society, our government, our military, our law enforcement, I want you to listen carefully to what I'm going to read you. I'm going to quote verbatim an article which appeared in the newsletter called Aid and Abet Police Newsletter, Volume 2, Constitutional Issues for Lawmen, Number 1. Volume 2, number 1. That's Aid and Abet Police Newsletter. Now, this letter, according to the editor of this newsletter, was written by a police chief. Here he uses a pseudonym, so he says, so that the police chief's identity is not revealed. However, as you will find out, if you have listened to our series on Mystery Babylon, this is not just a police chief. This is a highly degreed member of the Masonic Lodge. And he gives himself away with his symbology. For at the end of his article, he signs it, quote, So mote it be, unquote. Aid and Abet is put out by Officer Jack McLam, who has been written up as one of the best police officers ever produced by the state of Arizona. We neither endorse him, nor do we condemn him. As far as Kaji is concerned, our vote is not in yet. 
on this organization. We know that in order to bring about the New World Order, they need to identify everyone who will uphold the real law, the Constitution, the supreme law of the land. They need to identify those people and get them out of positions of authority and, if necessary, take them out of society completely. There are organizations which exist solely for the purpose of identifying those people in government, those people in the patriot community, those police officers serving in police organizations who would ultimately support the Constitution and the Bill of Rights against any effort to destroy it. Aid and abet may be one of these means. We do not know that for certain. But if you listen to this letter, this letter, because it's signed with a pseudonym, may not be from a police chief at all, but may be from those who control aid and abet to tell the police officers what is expected of them in the New World Order. Again, we do not know this to be true. But we have discovered, ladies and gentlemen, in our investigations that those who oppose us, who would destroy us, use the Hegelian dialectic of political conflict resolution. They control both sides of every issue. They set in motion methods and means to identify their enemy and destroy their enemy before their enemy can hurt them. And that's why we have been on the losing end for literally thousands of years with these people. I now quote from this news letter. To the question of, do some judges, prosecutors, and police officers today commit dishonest acts to put criminals away? I answer an unequivocal yes. But it is hoped that it is not done without just cause. True immorality exists only when the cause is not just. Notice how they've turned the definition of morality around. And he goes on, After more than 20 years of service to my fellow Americans, I realize what reality is. The truth is that today many judges, attorneys, police officials, and officers are devotees of the religion of secular humanism, myself included. Some of our members, mainly out of fear, will not admit that SH is a religion, that secular humanism is a religion. They are apprehensive that we might be treated as the so-called Christians have been treated under the doctrine of separation of church and state. Such fear might be well founded if this were 15 to 20 years ago. Not so today. Reason being, colleagues of our faith are, for the most part, in control of the agencies and organizations such as the ACLU, ABA, Justice Department, etc., that would normally protest such cases. Although this may at first seem unfair, it is not. But allow me to proceed, and I believe you will come to full understanding of this and many other important facts. My feelings are that it is time we shepherds open the eyes of our flock and further sort out those we cannot take with us into the 21st century. I'm going to pause here. In case you don't understand exactly what this man just said, I'm going to read this paragraph again to you. Remember, this is purported to be a police chief writing under a pseudonym to the police newsletter called Aid and Abet. Listen very carefully, ladies and gentlemen, and you'll see when I've labeled you sheeple, I have not been, I have not been incorrect. Quote, My feelings are that it is time we shepherds open the eyes of our flock and further sort out those we cannot take with us into the 21st century. Now those of you who thought that I was insane when I told you that if you don't go along with the New World Order, if you can't renounce your old religion and your old societal ways and your old morals and conform to the new age, you will be exterminated. They make no secret of this. I continue. 
Any that would deny that our religion of secular humanism is not a valid religion should do their homework. The Supreme Court decided that it is a religion some years ago in the Torcaso versus Abington, Abington versus Shemp, and in Torcaso versus Watkins cases. According to the High Court, it is, quote, belief, not body, creed, or cult, which appears to be the essence of religion, unquote. It further explains that, quote, belief refers to some sort of universal view of life of the world of mankind, a belief that is held to be true about mankind, unquote. In essence, the Supreme Court said that one's religion can be, quote, any world view with or without reference to God, theistic or non-theistic in nature, unquote. I hope this helps others to understand our faith. However, this, of course, is not the main point of my speech. I wish to address the abuse of police officers who ascribe, knowingly or unknowingly, to the moral tenets of our religion in regards to ethics and morals. Nationwide, our devotees are enduring horrible discrimination at the hands of a very hypocritical faction of society, the Christians. This discrimination comes as we humanists exercise our own religious beliefs and apply our morals, quote, on the job, unquote, so to speak. Yet other officers may apply their own individual belief systems, morals, and ethics at will without any condemnation. This is undeniable discrimination. Fortunately, our religion is the fastest growing of any in all of history, and many of the younger generation within the criminal justice system, including police officers who ascribe to sound secular humanist principles, are now in management, which is of benefit to all. This does give us sway power and is a plus for our side. Still, there is far too much discrimination against those who would apply a most important principle of our religion. Quote, situation ethics, unquote. The principle of situation ethics allows the individual to focus correctly on only the goal to be accomplished. Morally speaking, little if any consideration need be given to the method or means, as nothing else supersedes its importance. Of course, concern is given to finding a means of accomplishing a task or goal so as to have the least negative impact on the least amount of our people. Notice he says, our people. In my youth, I recall hearing the great Green Bay Packer coach Vince Lombardi describe it this way, quote, winning is not everything, it is the only thing, unquote. Much of our society lives by this principle today. Yes, even many of those who profess other faiths and occupy pulpits throughout America. Personally, I think the principle of situation ethics is best described by examining the legal definition of ethics and morals given by our now compatriots, the communists. The communist definition is, quote, everything is ethical and moral as long as it promotes world communism, unquote. This is pure secular humanism. We can learn much, incidentally, about total commitment from the communists. The Marxists have, out of pragmatic necessity, expurgated a minimum of 90 million people in the pursuit of man's noblest mission, world peace. What intelligent person could call immoral any means used to accomplish this all-important goal? Do you, do you think this guy's playing with a full load of bricks here? I don't. And he continues, in our great humanist manifestos, signed in 1933 and 1973, we explain our moral creed, which is very much the same as the Marxist creed, yet set forth in much more palatable and tactful terms. Here is a brief summation of our beliefs regarding ethics and truth. Ethics. Moral values derive their source from human experience. Ethics is autonomous and situational, needing no theological or ideological sanction. Ethics stems from human need and interest. To deny this distorts the whole basis of life. We strive for the good life here and now. And that's from the Humanist Manifesto 2, written and signed in 1973. Authority and truth. 
We reject those features of traditional religious morality that denies humans a full appreciation of their own potentialities and responsibilities. Traditional religions often offer solace to humans, but as often they inhibit humans from helping themselves or experiencing their full potentialities. We can discover no divine purpose or providence for the human species. Humans are responsible for what we are or will become. Remember, folks, I educated you in that part of the Masonic religion and the religion of the Rosen Cross and the Knights Templar and the Knights of Malta, the Red Cross of Constantine. All of these believe that man is in a state of becoming. Becoming what? Becoming gods. I continue. Humans are responsible for what we are or will become. No deity will save us. We must save ourselves. That's from the Humanist Manifesto 2, 1973. After 20 plus years of conditioning, our society now largely subscribes to this philosophy. Some of you who practice selective Christianity are closer to our faith than to the superstitions of the Bible thumpers of old. In selective Christianity, of course, you choose certain portions of the so-called Word of God to believe in and discard the parts that are not convenient. Don't you see that in this we are just alike? Your faith is actually based upon what is right under man's desire. We humanists are in fact more honest. We admit that there is no God that it is only man's desires that are important. You leaders of these selective Christians preach that your faith is based on some parts of God's law, but in actuality the majority is based on what feels good or is convenient. Now I must break here for just a second, folks, to tell anyone who j may have just tuned in that these are not my words. If you're sitting there with your lower jaw on your chest, looking aghast at your radio, you are not listening to the thoughts of William Cooper or the hour of the time. I am quoting verbatim from a letter attributed to a police chief, and this letter can be found in Aid in Abet, a police newsletter, volume two, number one, in case you want to pursue this. Quite obviously, I'm continuing now, quite obviously, America's government now operates under the guiding principles of humanism. Deception, lying, cheating, stealing, killing is all moral if it promotes the attainment of our essential goals. This is true righteousness. Folks, i got to stop right here and tell you this is true bullshit. This is deception at its worst. For these people are actually believing that wrong is right and right is wrong. And that is exactly what we were warned about in these days. And that is what I warned you about in my book, Behold a Pale Horse. And I told you years ago that the belief of these people is that the ends justify the means, whatever they might be. If they must kill two billion people to make their dream come true, they will do it. Mark my words, they will do it. A prime example, I continue now, a prime example can be seen in the recent war against Iraq. Over 250,000 have lost their lives so far, and more are dying every day, all for the attainment of a higher good, the goal of our great humanist leaders, world peace through world government. You see, the writer of this letter understood what I understood about the Gulf War. It wasn't about Iraq taking Kuwait. It was, in fact, about a new world order. George Bush even stated that. He said in our speech, his speech, I should say, our fifth goal in the Middle East is a new world order. Though I would venture to say 
that he stated it as his fifth goal in order not to give it too much attention in the public eye. It was actually the first goal, ladies and gentlemen. I continue. This New Age teaching is the reason why, for example, a police officer, one of secular humanist persuasion, is likely to risk his very life to save a member of society one moment, and the very next moment, take the witness stand and lie in order to win an important case. This is not to be considered immoral, given the particular standard of ethics upon which such an officer bases his morality, namely, that the end justifies any means. In other words, again, the higher good principle. Many people still do not understand this. They don't understand that this is why our presidents and their staffs, members of Congress and hosts of others with leadership roles in America, lawyers, judges, etc., lie and cheat right alongside our dedicated humanist law enforcers to repeat all for the greater good of society or, in effect, the system. And I add, outside the letter written by the chief, if it is really a chief, ladies and gentlemen, that all of these people belong to the secret societies, the ones who lie and cheat and murder. And I continue. What the masses must be made to understand and never be allowed to forget is that this is for their own good. They should know by now that those who are actually in control of our government, as Colonel Oliver North explained, truly know what is best for the people. They must also know that under the New World Order, the justice system's primary mission will be to protect the system from the masses. It is precisely in view of this that we on the inside have been obligated all along to use the system to suppress dissenters as quickly as possible before any radical anti-world government, anti-humanist group can gain the upper hand. I must read that again, folks, for those of you who may be a little bit slow in understanding, and some of us are especially with something that you can't quite grasp and never heard before. That's excusable. Again, what the masses must be made to understand and never be allowed to forget is that this is for their own good. They should know by now that those who are actually in control of our government, as Colonel Oliver North explained, truly know what is best for the people. They must also know that under the New World Order, the justice system's primary mission will be to protect the system from the masses. It is precisely in view of this that we on the inside have been obligated all along to use the system to suppress dissenters as quickly as possible before any radical anti-world government, anti-humanist group can gain the upper hand. You're aware, of course, that the vast majority of Americans seek only peace and security. They hardly even realize that they have virtually made government their new god, to which they turn for the fulfillment of every need. Our New Age leaders, and we soldiers as their arms and legs, stand ready to give the masses all for which they pray. And ladies and gentlemen, I, William Cooper, in the hour of the time, have warned you that if you don't wake up, if you don't change the course of the future, that you would get exactly what you want, and that you would be slaves in a new world order. You see, to revert to the state of childhood means you must have a daddy. Some daddies aren't too nice, and even the nice ones restrict your personal freedoms until you reach the age of maturity. In this case, there will be no age of maturity. I can assure you. I continue with the letter. Let me repeat, our job within the criminal justice system today is to protect the plan, the system, and punish those that our leaders decide are enemies of that system. You doubted me when I said there was a plan, ladies and gentlemen? there is the verification that there is in fact a plan an ancient plan I continue of course now as with our Soviet colleagues under New Age humanist situation ethics 
We are not limited in the methods we may apply to win. We can therefore proceed with unobstructed haste to make the masses safe and peaceful. <laughs> Let's look again in our example of that police officer who routinely risks his life for others and yet will lie on the witness stand to help his government win some case in court. If some of you are still surprised at this, then perhaps you haven't understood what I've been trying to convey, nor have you understood what your children have learned so well over the last 20 years within the government school system. It is that we are living in a new age where man has wisely placed his trust in government instead of some superstition called the divine or God. It is the old religious morals that have caused all of our problems. A new age calls for a new belief system, a new moral code, a new religion. It is exciting to see most all of the religions of the world coming nicely together, united in preparation to serve the new world order. Remember I told you that your religious leaders are not really on your side and all the churches that belong to the World Council of Churches are bringing you all closer to one religion which will not resemble anything that Christ taught. I continue. We must all dedicate ourselves to obeying our leaders without question and to the instruction of succeeding generations toward our utopian goals of world peace. I would like to introduce you to one present-day scholar, Dr. Sidney Simon, who has been very effective and deserving of much credit, deserving of much credit for his efforts in this work of re-educating humanity. He speaks plainly and his meaning is unmistakable as when he says, Quote, we do not need any more preaching about right and wrong. The old thou shalt nots simply are not relevant. Unquote. He goes on to explain to the child educators he is addressing that, quote, values clarification, unquote, is a method for teachers to change the values of children without getting caught. Values clarification is just another term for situation ethics. A book in use by educators called Weep for Our Children spells out values clarification as part of the new morality. Listen to this carefully. This is a book in use by teachers teaching your children right this moment. It's called Weep for Our Children. Quote, it's okay to lie. It's okay to steal. It's okay to have premarital sex. It's okay to cheat or to kill if these things are part of your value system and you have clarified these values for yourself. The important thing is not what values you choose, but that you have chosen them yourself freely and without coercion of parents, spouse, priest, friends, ministers, or social pressure of any kind, unquote, and that makes me very, very angry. That's one of the reasons my daughter is not in school and never will be in school. She already knows, knows more now than most children twice her age from the homeschooling that she gets. This is incredible. Don't go away. I have to take a breath. It makes me angry just to read this crap. Look around at those that you love right now. If you cannot assure them at this moment, this very moment, right this moment, that you have protected their financial future then you must call Swiss America Trading right now. And this isn't anything unusual, for whether we were expecting something to happen or not, a responsible, a responsible person takes care of his loved ones against unforeseen events also. Most Americans have fallen in, have fallen in, to a very, very bad habit. They have nothing whatsoever to fall back upon. 
And if they were to sell everything that they own, the average American family would be left with approximately 2,500 2500 fraudulent, counterfeit, usury Federal Reserve notes, the value of which are constantly declining. Always. Always. For it has to, to make the debt economy work. You see, for you to pay off a debt, someone else must borrow an equal amount or more. And this must continue all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read the last paragraph again. I want you to hear this. Remember, this is a book in use by teachers, educators, called Weep for Our Children, and it spells out values clarification as part of the new morality. Quote, it's okay to lie, it's okay to steal, it's okay to have premarital sex, it's okay to cheat or to kill if these things are part of your value system and you have clarified these values for yourself. The most important thing is not what values you choose, but that you have chosen them yourself freely and without coercion of parents, spouse, priest, friends, ministers, or social pressure of any kind." Unquote. It is such that secular humanism proponents in the government schools, the teachers whom we can thank for remolding the values of these next generations. When the government national child care bill is passed, it will be a great day for humanists and proponents of world peace. What wonders we can achieve once we have the attention of the nation's preschoolers for six to nine hours a day. Look what we have already accomplished with the older age groups of America's youth. As I hinted earlier, this new society based on the deity of man will demand a new kind of law enforcer. Remember I told you? They believe that man is in a state of becoming. Becoming what? A god. He says, as I hinted earlier, this new society based on the deity of man will demand a new kind of law enforcer. One of our educators said to me some weeks ago, America's religious zealots of the past would be shocked at the changes the people have allowed. She was correct, for after all, it was James Madison that said, quote, We have staked the whole future of American civilization not upon the power of government, far from it. We have staked the future upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to sustain ourselves, according to the Ten Commandments of God, unquote. Ah, but it is a new day, and we are fast proceeding into the 21st century. Americans no longer wish to assume the responsibilities of governing themselves. Happily for them, there is a whole new generation of very dedicated leaders and enforcers in government to see that they are cared for. Let me address for a moment the question of police manpower. As the citizens relinquish, out of fear, more of their rights, more enforcers are required to regulate and supervise the people's activities so that they remain safe and peaceful. Who would have thought 100 years ago that the integration of fear of literally everything would have been the answer to establishing the New World Order? Credit for this innovation goes to the free thinkers of the last generation. And folks, if you think he's wrong, just look at yourselves. Look what you've put up with. Look what you've allowed to happen. Look at the state our nation is in. Look at the fact that we've already lost most of the Bill of Rights, the portion of the Constitution known as the First Ten Amendments. You all file and pay income taxes, which you are not required to file or pay. You do everything out of fear. And that's why you're known as the sheeple, most of you. Not all, but most, without any doubt. Most of you, that title fits like a handmade pair of Italian shoes. It's very comfortable, isn't it? 
isn't it? Now the older generation known as peace officers, servants of the people, might not so readily have adopted nor fit into this nor new order of things. Fortunately, this has not posed too great a problem due to the fact that they are rapidly being replaced through natural attrition, in effect death or retirement, and now Hillary's running around the country, folks, wants to open a dialogue on euthanasia. Timely, isn't it? I continue. The next seven to eight years will see the last of them removed. At the same time, police agencies are of necessity attempting more and more to screen out before hiring those prospective officers who believe in the old religious superstitions. This is wise because these zealots will not do the things that will be required of them under the new system. Those remaining police officers who openly profess a belief system steeped on old world religious fundamentalism can be and are being phased out on any number of charges such as can be substantiated over time or with the help of a little innovation on the part of new management. And we believe that this organization aid and abet may be the organ used to identify those police officers. I continue. Before I continue, I better clarify, folks. We believe that, and we have good grounds for our belief. However, we cannot prove it. You must make up your own mind, yourselves. I continue. Some of these old-time officers complain that this type of job discrimination is unconstitutional and immoral. But we know they are wrong. Under situation ethics, all things are moral as long as they promote the goal. Therefore, they are not being removed for any evil cause. They are incompatible and simply non-functional for the duties that will be required of them. You might ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, what are the duties? that will be required of them. I think you've already seen some examples at Ruby Ridge and Waco, Texas and many other places. And I go on with the letter. I feel I need to say again that if a professional police officer must lie against those who violate the law, then it is moral the same is true when government judges and attorneys withhold evidence and witnesses from the jury to win their cases. When a politician lies to win an office or makes deals that promote the new order, it is moral. Let me tell you what is truly immoral. I will use the issuance of traffic citations as only one example. True immorality is when five out of ten good upstanding citizens take the witness stand, swear an oath to their God, and then proceed to fabricate lies to get out of their tickets. This our enforcement officers witness daily in court. To them, this is not only immoral, but highly hypocritical. The enforcer's dishonesty helps society as a whole. If a government agent lied for personal reasons, then it would be immoral. If done for the betterment of mankind, it is not. And that is the most important lesson I bring you today. It is one thing when a leader or agent of government has to lie or otherwise deceives his subjects. It is quite another when an ordinary individual from among the masses Quote, bites the hand that feeds him, unquote, by lying to those who are bringing salvation in this brave new world. Do we see this important difference? The old world understood that it was the greatest of sins to lie or to deceive God. The generations of devotees that wish to enter the new world must likewise be brought to the understanding that it is the greatest of sins to lie to deceive their new God government. Any such disloyalty would surely hamper the progress of those engaged in ushering in the glorious new world order. We are not concerned with the few who may resist this new order, 
for out of pragmatic necessity their fate has been amply allowed for in the master plan. What we are most concerned about at present is that the obedient masses be made to understand that it is detrimental to progress for them to suggest that their supervisors wallow under the pressure and futility of the antiquated superstitions, morals, and dogma of the past. There will be some difficult changes facing the person entering this new society. On these issues, however, we can assure the people there will be no compromise. Thank you for listening. May the blessing of the new order come swiftly upon us. So mote it be. So mote it be is taken directly from the initiation ceremonies of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. And you will hear it nowhere else, ladies and gentlemen. Whoever wrote this was a highly degreed Freemason of the Scottish Rite. And he is under a pseudonym explaining the true purpose, the true religion, and the true plan for the religion that those who frequent the Lodge actually adhere to. So you see, in Aid and Abet, a police newsletter, volume 2, number 1, all of the police officers who subscribe to this newsletter are the good guys. The good guys. They have been delivered a warning from a police chief under a pseudonym which makes it very plain what will happen to any police officer who does not go along with the new world order. And I say that it was intentionally that way and that there is no police chief, Rupert Orpheus, pseudonym or not, but this is the policy that needed to be explained to all of these officers at once to hasten their decision. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes right down to it, most people will do what they're told, when they're told, if they're told, and they have been told. I hope that you are intelligent enough to understand what you have just heard and exactly what it means. If you are not, if you are not, dear sheeple, God have mercy upon your soul. You're going to need it. Those long-time listeners to the hour of the time those who have been awake for quite some time, those who were never asleep, understand that there is a plan in the world that the members of the secret societies, by whatever name they call themselves to you, the profane, in their exoteric language, are using to bring about the ages-old dream of a new world order where the masses are totally and completely controlled for each and every second of every moment of every hour of every day of their lives and where the priests of the mysteries govern in what they call a council of wise men the public at large will not know much about this council of wise men, for there will be at the head of this council a charismatic religious and political leader. This is necessary for the public needs somewhere to vent their emotions, their elations, their angers. And it will make no difference if they topple this leader from his throne the real leaders will remain untouched as they have remained untouched throughout the history of the world. Those of you who really believe that this hick, William Clinton, is leading this nation and making the decisions
You probably, at some point within the last 24 hours, thought you were Rush Limbaugh and set on half your brain. And those of you who believe that you really have a choice at election time, when the choice has already been made, and it's especially damaging if you believe that your vote really counts when it is the Electoral College that elects the president. And in fact, that's really not necessary unless some ringer slips into the choice like Gary Hart. Didn't you wonder why Gary Hart was completely and totally destroyed forever because someone photographed him on a boat with one woman not doing anything wrong? And Bill Clinton is not even tarnished. Don't you understand? Bill Clinton is just a messenger boy and if he gets impeached it will not solve anything and those of you running around signing petitions to impeach William Clinton had better read the Constitution of the United States of America you see you cannot peach, impeach a president because somebody signed a petition I don't care if 200 million Americans sign that petition. You cannot impeach William Clinton, you fools. You must prove that he has committed high crimes and misdemeanors. And you must have solid evidence. And you must have witnesses that don't die overnight. And documentation that doesn't disappear by the time next week comes along. Do you understand? Once again, they have you whirling around in circles at the end of a cul-de-sac. Good night, and God bless you all.